to guess who's back guess who's back I've, I've been wondering this for a while right i think i made a couple of videos wondering how out loud wondering out loud aloud however way you say it when chris Alia would make a comeback of course as you guys know you know last year some very serious allegations came out concerning chris Alia, the comedian um now that some time has gone by the allegations were a little bit you know didn't really have that much weight to them it just seemed like it was a bit much of a it was a he was a bit of a horny dog in the dms uh probably took it a bit too far with a couple of um, scenarios which uh, from what i can remember involved girls at the time who might have been under asia he didn't know then when they told him the age he then stepped away and then when they turned of age he then went back in the dms that was one of the things that was a bit off then there was that story with the lady i think she might be the comedian where he supposedly touched her he probably exposed herself in the car or something those are the ones right but again like you know the coming back when somebody's of age is it illegal no is it creepy yes you know you're gonna leave your sister or your you know <laughs> or anyone that you know that's female around him probably not um the story involving a comedian where he exposed himself is again it's alleged we don't really have any knowledge of it we weren't there no charges were brought against him it is what it is uh, but for the most part again i think i mentioned in one of my original videos the actual thing that really did sink him overall that really did affect him the most was this um what do you call it we got like a we got like um his persona got shattered in it right because he's this happy-go-lucky goofy silly goose guy and then suddenly you're seeing these dms and he's like this you know he's this cold sniper in the dms who's kind of lining up you know chick after chick after chick after chick during his shows and when he's on tour and it just completely threw you through you for a loop because you didn't see him that way of course you know everyone knows chris Lee has a very um, large female fan base he's probably one of the only um i'd say what uh conventionally attractive men in stand-up comedy a lot of these comedians look like burt kreischer and stuff right they're not exactly the most um pleasing physical specimens i guess for the female population so he had that weird position that he occupied where he was kind of young enough to have been on vine but then old enough to have still be a bit of a zaddy as they call him for the girls right he had that kind of allure about him um so he was probably just the only one probably going through this weird experience where he legitimately had loads of really attractive young women sliding into his dm when he was going on shows and of course that gets a bit too crazy and you can get a bit of your head of yourself and then add that to what he explained in the video that i'm going to play a bit where he basically confesses and says he um has a sexual addiction and that's what led him to the position where he was kind of you know essentially like i said going on tour and lining up chick after chick after chick and then having that essentially uh be the downfall of his career he did take a year off to kind of reflect it seems like you know going to therapy address his demons bloody blah 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 and from what i can see he did seem quite sincere i thought the apology was pretty well done um i thought he got away he got his got away with it he got he got his points i probably just slip there he got his points across pretty well um he seemed remorseful um he seemed reflective um completely different demean demeanor of course you know he's not going to be going um it's cancelled on here do you know what i mean he's not going to be saying that sort of stuff but i thought it was a pretty decent approach and a pretty decent way to go about it and again probably the best of the bunch from his community especially when you consider how brian callum dealt with the situation probably the worst ever you could deal with it right um you know trying to record a podcast straight after the allegations come out having it taken down then doing one behind a the paywall then um saying you will not be silenced then doing a good then doing one with a guy that clearly got some sort of substance abuse issues you know then getting ran off that because people don't want that on their platform then you know uh suing the husband of one of your accusers because he's defaming you and not allowing you to do shows imagine this guy like honestly callan probably dealt with it the worst <laughs> like again it's hard to say it's hard to say because you don't know if these allegations are all false you know like what are you meant to do if you generally believe you didn't do nothing wrong you're not meant to just sit there and just you know let your career that you've worked 20 plus years more since the day you've been born to kind of cultivate just disappear from you but I, unfortunately in this current you know climate that we're living in at the moment unless you've got the receipts like justin bieber you just have to lay low for a period of time and if you and if you do come out you have to come out with a plan you know boom 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 you can't just be you know i want to go and talk on my podcast and then no you can't go shut up you know do it behind a paywall you go do it behind a paywall 
and then <laughs> and then you don't have the ability to you don't have the visibility anymore then you can't sell tickets you have to go back on your show it's just like oh yeah yeah but anyway Chris Lee made an apology let's play a little bit of it now I'm sure most of you have probably seen it anyway but let's play the clip um, a little bit of it as we start this hi everyone um I know that it's been a really long time since you've heard from me. Um, and when the news broke, um, I put out a statement that said everything I've done has been legal and consensual, and that's true. And I wanted that statement to speak for itself. Um, and I wanted to talk immediately. I wanted to post online. I wanted to do my podcast business as usual. But I, I thought that that might not be the best thing what might be the best thing if i it would be if i just take this time to be with my family try and uh take a long hard look at myself and good decision, good decision. and just uh and and do that and um it was it was a lot it was hard i i first of all um i i do know how it looks uh <laughs> with the uh with all the tell me how it looks mate it looks really bad <laughs> understatement of the year in it understatement of the year i know how it looks you know while you're standing there like you know um covered in blood and uh you know a woman behind you lifeless <laughs> i know how it just looks <laughs> stuff that's been said and the the emails that have been put out there and what the media has been uh trying to say and i know it looks bad um and it <laughs> it doesn't show the full scope of the of what happened um i stand by the fact that all my relationships have been consensual and legal and that's just it um that's the truth i through this kind of time away um i've seeked out a lot of kind of um you know medical advice therapy and stuff like that uh that doesn't matter here nor there but what i have come to understand is um this was always about sex to me my life was i mean sex it it controlled my life it 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 was the focus it was my focus um which is understandable if you consider the other addictions people probably suffer from and the struggles that other comedians have gone through during lockdown um you look at you know the alcoholism the just being away from your family the you know the validation from strangers it's it makes sense you know what i mean because of course chris is like what sober doesn't treat doesn't do any drugs you have to have some sort of vice. And this is one of his vices, right? Getting up on stage, putting together new material, sick material, getting comedy specials, getting specials on Netflix, starring in hit shows on, you know, on Netflix as well, doing t TV series, you know, on regular TV, whatever it is. And then also using the opportunity to go and tour the country and, you know, expose himself and be in front of, expose himself, yeah, another fraudulent slip. But, you know, be in the presence of, you know, gorgeous women from all over the country and just kind of enjoy the fruits of that. And it can get a bit too nuts. It can definitely get too nuts. And again, I just think part of the story Story as well that was bad on him was more so the i guess the douchebaggery of it i think a, a couple of girls in the story is alleged that he was just you know always on his phone his friends group of friends were weird um it was quite transactional he just didn't seem like the most funnest guy to be around and i think a couple of ladies have basically said especially the ones that are actually fans of him they were kind of looking forward to going to hang out of course um some of them were naive as hell just thinking oh you know just going if you're gonna go hang out with a uh, a man in his flipping late 30s at 2 a.m in the morning in his hotel room that you're gonna be you know playing flipping candy crush right some of them were naive but most of them were very aware that they were probably gonna have some sort of intimate you know um experience with the guy but they just wanted to have a silly goose time too right they've known him from the podcast they've seen all these clips online they've watched his specials they've seen him on these shows they wanted to see that guy for a bit before you know he maybe stunk, stuck his tongue down their throat allegedly when that didn't happen it kind of just threw him into a loop like wow you're just a real douchebag isn't it? you're like any all the other guys you know that kind of general turn and that's why i thought kind of fucked him up 
in the same way that kind of story about you know him saying to one of the women oh you're gonna be my girlfriend now right that phrase that he sort of used in the few podcasts and the story about him exposing himself to some lady in a shop or something they all sounded quite legit that's what fucked him up it's not that i think looking back on these issues it's not that you get accused of these things because i think you can any man can get accused of whatever especially if somebody is vindictive and they just want to burn you right they just put an accusation out there and it could effectively derail your entire career um but if you've got a semblance of douchebaggery in you, there's probably an occasion, an encounter you've had with a woman that you've probably been a dick unnecessarily. And those people are vindictive and they want to kind of get their own back on you. And when they put the story out, even if they just put out the facts and maybe be a bit vague with the facts, sorry, and leave out some important details, it can look really, really bad, especially if it kind of marries up to your actual personality. And I guess with this, because it was just such an opposite, I think, you know, that that's where, that's what probably saved Louis C.K., right? The fact that he was a complete, you know, uh, piece of shit for the most part, lack of a better term on stage, right? He told you all his deepest, darkest thoughts. So when that story did come out about Louis C.K., you didn't really bat an eyelid because, you know, it's Louis C.K. But when you hear somebody like, you know, I don't want to mention somebody else that's clean cut because I don't want to put an X on their name. But if you heard of somebody that's like a you know a clean comic that's very wholesome, you know, imagine if you heard a story about Tom Papa. You know what I mean? That would really set you aback. You'd be like, huh? You wouldn't know what to do. So I think that's what really messed Chris Lee up in this extent. But again, you know, he's owned up to it. He took time away. He dealt with it. I think in the best possible way you could deal with it. I don't think at the time he could have come out and really done anything that would have changed the narrative. Because again, you have to remember at that time when that story came out, it seemed like there was a concerted effort behind the scenes you know in front of the scenes uh, within the mainstream media to take down the entire comedy industry it looked like they were really fishing for stories and you know these guys perform late at night in cd basement bars and venues in very um you know uh, less than ideal situations uh, you know they're on the road for you know days on end you know playing for you know 50 bucks or petrol money whatever it may be so i'm sure they've had some very sketchy encounters and you know it brings out the worst in people i'd imagine I, you know, i'm a fan of light life i go out to dance and rave sometimes and dj i know what it's like out there i can just imagine what it's like for a comedian um it's probably it's probably rough so um when those stories were being fished he probably he was the unfortunately the sacrificial lamb for everybody he took the bear he bear he bore the brunt of it really if you think about it even though canon's accusations think about it us far more um you know serious than what um Delia's allegations were he kind of got less of the blow I think when you're the first one out the gate especially within a little community you tend to get most of the bombs on you and then the other people that get accused you know um after the fact don't get as many and you can kind of you know ride their wave but you know what what, what can you do um he served his time I think as I said before I'm not really a fan of cancel culture in terms of corporations and broadsheets and shit deciding to cancel you and you know media companies and all that stuff because you know you know you don't use the right pronouns whatever nonsense it is I still think it's up to the consumers if the consumers have enough of you and they don't care about what you have to say and they've kind of gone off of you that's when you get cancelled right if your fans don't care anymore i don't think it's up to the media to tell you who you should and shouldn't be a fan of and you know obviously most more likely than not chris's career in hollywood is probably over you know there's there it seems that there is no redemption or um forgiveness or you know way to come back into your career unless you're one of the outliers i don't know i can imagine if ryan secrets got accused of something he'd be fine there's some people that just you know have a position for life but for most people if you do get an accusation even just like this is not even true it basically you know means your career is completely done so that's one of the thing that's bad but i guess and again like i said he's in a really you know fortunate position where he's a stand-up comedian um uh he's got a pretty successful podcast he's got a great group of friends in that podcast world who they could invite on to his show too he'll be fine he'll get up he'll, he'll be back on his feet in no time especially when the world reopens up again people you know his fans would want to go to see him perform stand up his friends will want to put him on his show to allow him to kind of get his voice out there and he'll keep continuing trucking on but you know the dream of him being an action movie star is probably gone unless he does indie movies and shit for the foreseeable future but you know um beggars can't be choosers especially if you've been accused of what he's been accused of but hey he's innocent or so it seems we don't know we don't know who knows who knows let me know what you think in the comments below do you think it was a good apology um do you think it's too soon should you have come back earlier I'd like to know your thoughts and opinions down below.